Thank you. Thank you both for your service, and we look forward to working with you in the future. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator Rounds. Senator Schmidt. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, General Whiting, in um, speaking in support of DEI initiatives, General Brown said that, quote, there's still a lot to do because this is a cultural shift. This isn't something you can get done in just a couple of years. Do you believe that General Brown should be relieved of his command because of those statements? Senator, no, I do not. Okay, General Milley, in speaking in support of DEI initiatives, said, quote, it's diversity to improve the system, improve the military, improve our problem-solving capabilities, and improve our war-fighting readiness in order to protect and defend the Constitution. That's why it's so important, so fundamental, that we have this as one of our elements as we move forward to continue to develop the joint force, end quote. Do you believe General Milley should be relieved of his command? Senator, no, I do not. Do you believe that that's a partisan, do you believe that's partisan political speech? Senator, no, I do not. Okay. Lieutenant Colonel Lomar said our, our DEI industry and trainings we're receiving in the military via the industry are rooted in critical race theory, which is rooted in Marxism. He was relieved of his command for those statements, correct? Senator, that's correct. By you, right? Senator, there were other comments regarding specific political parties that, that are in addition to what you just quoted. Okay, this was from the podcast, which was cited by you. So I'm asking, is opposition to DEI partisan political speech? Senator, no, it's not unless it advocates for a specific political party or a candidate. Okay. Well, I would agree with that. Um, but Lieutenant, so your testimony today is Lieutenant Colonel Lomar was relieved for something other than these statements on the podcast, or was that part of your consideration? Senator, it involved a specific quote involving a specific political party. Okay. In his free time or on duty or... Sir, what it was on content? a podcast where he associated himself, as, or he identified himself as an active duty Space Force officer and commander. Okay. On that, so there were other comments that, other than this one I read to you about DEI. Senator, I think that podcast was about an hour long. Okay. Well, we'll follow up with some of our questions. I guess I want to ask you, um, do you support DEI initiatives in the military? Senator, I support uh, a ready, lethal force that draws from the best talent all across America. Okay, that's not my question. Um, I support that too, sure. uh, but that's not what DEI is. DEI is rooted in cultural Marxism, so I'm asking you, do you support DEI initiatives in the military? Senator, I support a merit-based approach to finding the best people across okay. this country. Okay, that's not DEI either. So do you support DEI initiatives in the military? Senator, based on how it is, it is defined, I want to find the best people across anywhere in this country, geographically or any demographic, who can support the defense of this. Do nation. you believe that uh, our brave military men and women should be pitted against one another based solely on their race? No, sir, I do not. Do you believe um, or do you accept the proposition that General Brown in his August of 2022 memo that we should have racial quotas with officer class? Senator, I, I am not aware that General Brown has said that. Okay, if General Brown said that we should have a reduction in the number of white officers serving to 67% of officers down from whatever, I think it's a total of 5,400 officers, do you support that? Senator, I support that promotion should be based on merit. Okay, so you don't support the idea that we would have racial quotas for the officer class? That's correct, Senator. Okay. Um, I do want to ask you also, what role do you think um, DEI, or what's your experience? What, firsthand for you, what have you in these trainings, what have you seen? What have been the, the trainings that have taken place? I'm not talking about reaching for the best and the brightest. I want to understand, because we, we have a military recruitment problem, right? And so the issue, I think, is if people view and this is coming from the Department of Defense and it's been widely talked about in this committee, if people view that um, politics is being infused in our military, do you think that that would hurt recruitment? Sir, the, I, I do, and I think the, the military must be rigorously apolitical and nonpartisan. Right, do you think inf infusing abortion politics into our military hurts our recruiting? Sir, we in the military should not be partisan or political. Okay. Do you think infusing COVID politics into our military hurts our recruiting? Meaning, do you think that people should have been fired for not getting the vaccine? Sir, we are required to uphold a legal order. 
Okay, do you think we should actively recruit those 8,500 people who were fired for not getting the vaccine? Sir, I would like to see those individuals who, who can come back um, apply to come back. Yes, sir. Do you think we should recruit them to come back? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. And then do you believe um, that the, are you familiar with the August memo of 2022 from General Brown? I, I am not, sir. Okay, we'll, in some follow-up questions, ask you your, your points of view on that. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Senator Mullen. Thank you um, for those that are here and thank you for the family that has come